two countries gained independence at the same time while one country upholds democratic values and dominates many areas in the globe the other country is still mired in political uncertainty economic instability and religious extremism let's have a look at the history of pakistan on august 15th 1947 british india was divided into two nations india and pakistan but the demand for an independent islamic nation is decades old the indian national congress was the main organization that raised the demand for india's independence from the british and congress never had any caste or religious distinction among its members however the majority of members in congress were hindus this was a matter of concern for many muslim leaders within congress when these concerns grew further all india muslim league was formed in dhaka on december 30 1906 it was under the leadership of nawab khwaja salimullah in 1913 mohammad ali jinnah a former congress leader joined the muslim league after having a feud with gandhi jinnah was initially an intermediary between congress and the league in december 1916 the league and the congress agreed to cooperate further through the lucknow pact in 1930 the then president of muslim league mohammad iqbal proposed the idea of an independent islamic state iqbal suggested that northwestern provinces of sindh baluchistan punjab and the northwestern frontier province of the british india should unite to form an islamic state it was named pakistan in 1933 by chaudhary rahmat ali and the name pakistan was derived from the names of punjab afghan kashmir indus sindh and baluchistan but the word pakistan in urdu also means a land of pure in march 1940 jinnah put forward the idea of two nation theory through the lahore resolution at the muslim league meeting held in lahore according to this india and pakistan would become two independent nations if they gained independence from the british thus in 1947 under the mount batten plan of june 3rd plan it was agreed to grant independence to india and divide british india into two later through the india independence act of 1947 british india became independent on 15th august 1947 accordingly it was decided to cede western punjab northwest frontier province sindh baluchistan in the western sector and east bengal in the eastern region to pakistan and these two regions were around 1600 km apart with india in between them mohammad ali jinnah was appointed as the governor general of the new nation of pakistan but one year later on september 11 1948 jinnah died there were no influential or capable leaders in muslim league like jinnah therefore finding a new governor general was not that easy but if anyone else is to be found it must be someone who doesn't rise above the powers of the prime minister thus it was decided to make chief minister of east bengal khwaja nazimuddin as the new governor general although prime minister liaquat ali khan became more powerful with the appointment of khwaja nazimuddin he was unable to replace jinnah or exert much influence in the party moreover the chief ministers and leaders of the provinces who were loyal to jinnah became more powerful than the prime minister realizing that it was necessary to come up with a clear governance structure to overcome all this prime minister khan began the necessary efforts to make a new constitution for the country but it was interrupted a number of times the majority of the population of pakistan was in the east bengal and that too was having a good percentage of hindus in it but the greatest political influence was in western provinces which include the strongholds such as punjab many opposed granting of equal status to a hindu majority province in an islamic country despite the opposition prime minister liaquat ali khan went further with the idea of constitution he also participated in many rallies to seek support from the people and interact directly with them but on october 16 1957 at such a rally in rawalpindi Liaquat Ali Khan was assassinated. Governor General Khwaja Nazimuddin has taken over as the Prime Minister of Pakistan to fill the vacancy created by Liaquat Ali Khan's assassination. Malik Ghulam Mohammad becomes a new Governor General. With Nazimuddin the politically weak Prime Minister and powerful Ghulam Mohammad becoming Governor General, the center of power returned to the Governor General. Meanwhile in 1953 extremist Muslim sympathizers in Punjab staged a protest. they demanded that ahmadiyas be declared non muslims and expel from power centers however prime minister nazimuddin could not handle the situation properly 
Citing this reason, Governor General Ghulam Muhammad dismissed the Nazimuddin government. In 1952, protest against the Muslim League became strong in East Bengal. The protests were against Urdu becoming the national language of Pakistan. Bengali was the language spoken by the people of East Bengal, which was a part of East Pakistan. As a result, many other parties emerged against the Muslim League in East Bengal. Fasalul Haq's Krishak Samak Party and Mujibul Rahman's Awami League were the prominent among them. In 1954, elections were held in East Bengal. Fasalul Haq's Islamic Party and Mujibul Rahman's Awami League, which had contested together as a united front against the Muslim League, won a landslide victory. Thus, the Muslim League was completely wiped out from East Bengal. Fasalul Haq, who won a majority, went ahead with the efforts to form a new government. But at the same time, riots broke out in the factories in Dhaka. For these reasons, the central government of Pakistan introduced governor rule in East Bengal. In this way, they were able to subvert the electoral victory of United Front. Iskandar Misra, a former minister in the Pakistani government, has been appointed the governor of East Pakistan. At the same time, moves to draft a constitution were going on. One of the recommendations of the Constituent Assembly which convened for this purpose was to limit the powers of the Governor General. Dissatisfied with this, Governor General Ghulam Muhammad dissolved the Constituent Assembly itself. But the Supreme Court of Pakistan froze the move. The court also directed the formation of a new Constituent Assembly. Following this, Ghulam Muhammad formed a new assembly, including his loyalists. In 1955, the provinces of West Pakistan were transformed into a single administrative unit. At the same time, East Bengal was renamed as East Pakistan. Ghulam Muhammad resigned due to physical ailments. Iskandar Misra became the new Governor General. By 1956, after a long struggle, Pakistan had drafted a new constitution. Thus, Pakistan has been officially renamed the Islamic Republic of Pakistan. The new constitution gave the Prime Minister more powers. The new position of President was also created equivalent to the position of Governor General. But the powers of the President had been curtailed. And Iskandar Misra, the then Governor General, became the first President of Pakistan. Although the powers of President were constitutionally reduced, President Mirza was often unwilling to accept this. Mirza even abused the powers to dissolve the government. Mirza's policies, which acted like a dictatorship, often led to political instability in the country. Realizing this, the Pakistan army led by General Ayub Khan overthrew Iskandar Misra on October 27, 1958 and seized the power. In 1960, Ayub Khan became the new president of Pakistan. Ayub Khan was of the opinion that democratic rule was not suitable for Pakistan. The Khan regime also imposed restrictions on political activities. But the defeat in war with India and the economic downturn at the time provoked popular outrage against the president. Following this, Ayub Khan had to resign in 1969. In March 1969, General Yahya Khan became the new president. In 1970, Pakistan held the first national elections. Elections were held in 300 constituencies. Of this, 162 were in East Pakistan and 138 were in West Pakistan. Mujibul Rahman's Awami League, which campaigned for the autonomy for East Pakistan, won almost all the seats in East with a large majority. In West Pakistan, Sulfikar Ali Bhutto's PPP, the Pakistan People's Party, won a landslide victory. Since most of the seats were in East Pakistan, Mujibul Rahman, who dominated there, gets a majority needed to form the government. But West Pakistan, with its strong provinces, did not like the idea of a leader in East Pakistan taking over the whole of Pakistan. Bhutto and Mujibul Rahman were in talks for a compromise led by President Yahya Khan. But the talks stalled as both sides were not ready to compromise. Bhutto convinced Yahya Khan that it is necessary to delay the formation of government. Mujibul Rahman once again convinced the people of East Bengal that they were being deceived. This led to the great riots and struggles all over Bengal. To quell this, on March 25, 1971, the Pakistan army landed in East Bengal and suppressed the protesters. Mujibur Rahman, who was arrested and taken to West Pakistan, was imprisoned. All protesters were arrested and many of them were killed. This 1971 genocide is one of the darkest periods in Pakistan's entire history. It was a time when the Cold War between the United States and Soviet Union was in full swing. In all the conflicts around the world, the US and Soviets were on opposite sides. Here, the US came to the scene supporting West Pakistan. Mujibur Rahman, on the other hand, was supported by India and Soviet Union. This led to a full-fledged war in 1971. In December 1971, Indian Army gave military support to Mujibur Rahman's resistance. Despite the fierce fighting, within a few days, the Indian Army with the help of Soviets subdued the Pakistan Army. Thus, East Pakistan became a new country. 
that is what we call bangladesh today following this defeat yahya khan resigned sulfikar ali bhutto became the new president in 1973 pakistan drafted a new constitution pakistan has moved from a system with president as the power center to prime minister centric government with a centralized parliamentary system sulfikar ali bhutto resigns as president and becomes prime minister but bhutto was not different from his predecessors bhutto continued to rule like a dictator there were riots all over the country but all of them were suppressed and protesters were arrested in 1977 pakistan held the second national election bhutto's ppp party won another landslide victory however it was accused that the election was rigged this led to a large scale protest that turned into riots the army which stayed away from the administration had to intervene again army arrested bhutto and dismissed the government general mohammad zia ul haq the army chief thus took over In 1978, Sia Ul Haq became the new president of Pakistan. Bhutto was hanged on April 4, 1979 for plotting to assassinate political opponents. President Sia Ul Haq was a staunch believer in Islam. He was of the opinion that all people should live only according to the ideals of Islam. This led to radical Islamization in Pakistan. The hijab was made compulsory for women. Punishment methods and banging practice in the country have all become as practiced by Islam. It was during this time that the war between Soviet Union and Afghanistan erupted. During the war, Pakistan provided financial and military assistance to the Mujahideen extremists in Afghanistan. Since the war was against the Soviet, the US government led by President Ronald Reagan had been providing assistance to Pakistan in the Afghan war. It is with this help that Pakistan has become a nuclear power. In 1985, national and provincial elections were held. There was a great deal of turmoil in the election. Mohammad Khan Junejo, a politician from the Sindh province became the new prime minister of Pakistan. Same year in December, martial law was also repealed. The removal of restrictions imposed by martial law led to renewed riots in the country. At the same time, large number of Afghans began to flee to Karachi. With this, weapons and drug trade became widespread in the country. Again, there was political instability in Pakistan. This was followed by the dismissal of Junejo government in 1988 by President Sia Ul Haq. Later that year, Sia Ul Haq was killed in a plane crash in Bhagalpur in Pakistan. Ghulam Isha Khan, the then Senate chairman, was sworn in as the new president. following Sia's death. By the time Benazir Bhutto, the daughter of Sulfikar Ali Bhutto had revived the PPP party. PPP became the largest single party to win the 1988 election. But it was in Punjab that they suffered the slightest setback. Victory of Nawaz Sharif, Islamic Democratic Alliance in Punjab affected the PPT's victory. Nawaz Sharif became the Punjab Chief Minister in December 1988 and Benazir Bhutto became the first woman Prime Minister of Pakistan. Instead of forming an alliance with Nawaz Sharif, attempts were made by Bhutto to oust Sharif from the post of chief minister. In retaliation, Sharif leveled allegations of corruption against Bhutto government. This led to a public unrest in the country. Bhutto blamed it on the army for the unrest and dismissed General Hamid Gul, the head of Pakistan's spy agency ISI. Following the ouster of Gul, a close ally of President Isha Khan, Isha Khan overthrew the Bhutto government in 1990. and call for new elections bhutto lost the elections and nawaz sharif won a landslide victory to become the new prime minister of pakistan recognizing the need for help of radical muslim sympathizers for stable governance nawaz sharif reaffirmed the islamic rule put forward by sia ul haq the sharia bill which implements sharia law in the country was passed by the national assembly but difference of opinion between sharif's government and the friends were strong In 1991 Nawaz Sharif replaced General Mirza Aslam Beg as army chief of staff with General Asif Nawaz by 1992 the communist government in Afghanistan had fallen Taliban formed a new government in Afghanistan with the help of Pakistani military however General Asif Nawaz dies in 1993 under mysterious circumstances without consulting the prime minister president Isha Khan appointed General Abdul Wahid Kakkar as a new commander in chief this has worsened tensions between the president and prime minister following this president isa khan dismissed the nawaz government this political instability again led to the intervention of army in july 1993 the military called on the prime minister and president to resign after this the army formed an interim government wasal sajad former senate chairman became the new president and moin qureshi took over as the prime minister despite being in power for a very short time this government has brought in many reforms to improve the economic situation in 
Pakistan. By October 1993, re election was held. Benazir Bhutto's PPP again won the majority. The PPP in alliance with Junajo's PMLJ formed the new government. PPP leader Farooq Lagadi became the new president of Pakistan. There were several allegations of corruptions against the new government. At the same time, there was pressure from US on Pakistan to settle the Kashmir issue. Same time, there were riots between Shia and Sunni sects in the Indus province. Following this, in November 1996, President Lagari dismissed the government. Thus, Miraj Khalid became the head of the new provisional government. In 1997, elections were held again. Bhutto's PPP suffered a major defeat and Nawaz Sharif PMLN won this time. The first thing Sharif did when he took office as new prime minister was to remove the power of the president to dissolve the government in his own opinion. At the same time, Sharif amended the constitution, reduced the number of judges of Supreme Court. In 1997, Sharif asked the president Lekhari to resign. At the same time, Pakistan began to develop nuclear weapons. As a response to this, many countries decided to withdraw the aid to Pakistan, demanding that development of nuclear weapons be stopped. Despite the implementation of new reforms, the country's foreign debt continued to rise rapidly. At the same time, there were massive protests against the government in country. To combat this, Nawaz Sharif declared state of emergency in the country. Jahangir Karamat, the army chief, was widely critical of this move. In retaliation, in October 1998, Sharif decided to remove Karamat from the post of army chief and appointed General Parvez Musharraf as his successor. Pakistan fought a war with India in 1999 Kargil. Bill Clinton, the then president of United States, called on Nawaz Sharif to withdraw troops from Kargil. Even though Sharif accepted the demand, Musharraf's forces did not consider it. Following this, Sharif plans to remove Musharraf from the office in October 1999. But this did not happen and army arrested Nawaz Sharif and seized the power. Musharraf announced that he was dismissing the Sharif government. Musharraf took over as the country's chief executive and appointed army officials to key positions. Although President Mohammad Rafiq Tara remained in office, all powers in the country remained in the chief executive. Sharif was charged with a number of offenses and sentenced to imprisonment. But due to pressure from other countries, Sharif was released from the prison. However, he was barred from entering the country for 10 years. In June 2001, Musharraf asked Rafiq Tara to step down and he himself took over as a president of Pakistan. In 2001, Musharraf held talks with Indian Prime Minister Vajpayee, but no decision was reached on Kashmir. Moreover, Musharraf did everything he could do to promote religious extremism in India. Although Taliban came to power in Afghanistan with the help of Pakistan, Pakistan was forced to fight the Taliban under US pressure. This angered the extremist Islamists in Pakistan. But Pakistan had no choice but to suppress many protests. In a referendum held in 2002, Musharraf sought permission to remain president for another five years. Musharraf's PMLQ party won a landslide victory in October 2002 parliamentary elections. Mutahida Majilisi Amal, an alliance of Islamist leaders, opposed Musharraf's policies in parliament, mainly for his action against extremist Islamist groups in Pakistan. In August 2004, Musharraf appointed former Finance Minister Shaukat Aziz as the new Prime Minister, but retained his presidency. In 2007, Musharraf sought re-election, but the Supreme Court ruled that it was unconstitutional for the President to remain in the office of military chief. Following this, Musharraf dismissed Iftikhar Mahmoud Choudhury, the then Chief Justice of Supreme Court. But the Apex Court quashed the decision and took Choudhury back. However, in the ensuing election, Musharraf himself was elected as a President. Despite the Supreme Court's opposition, Musharraf declared a state of emergency and froze the constitution. The judges of the Supreme Court were dismissed. In 2007, Musharraf reconstituted the Supreme Court with his own loyalists. At the same time, Musharraf stepped down as army chief and continued as a president. In 2007, deported Nawaz Sharif and Benazir Bhutto were allowed to return to Pakistan. On their return, they went on a campaign for the 2008 election. But Benazir Bhutto was killed during a rally in Rawalpindi in December 2007. This led to large-scale riots in the country. The country declared another state of emergency and the election was postponed to February. Musharraf's party PMLQ loses the election and Bhutto's PPP and Sharif's PMLN made an alliance and formed a new government. PPP's Yusuf Raza Gilani became the new prime minister. The new government in 2008 moved ahead with the impeachment proceedings against President Musharraf. Following this, Musharraf resigned as 
president sharif pulls out of coalition following controversy over the election of the new president thus in september 2008 asif ali sardari benazir bhutto's husband became the new president in 2009 us military drones led by us president barack obama attacked pakistan hideouts in may 2011 al qaeda leader osama bin laden was also killed in a similar attack by that time the economic situation country became worse all this forced the government to turned against the PPP government. In 2013, election was held again. Public opposition to PPP benefits Nawaz Sharif. Nawaz Sharif, who won by a large majority, became the Prime Minister for third time. Sharif, who took over as Prime Minister, took steps to bring financial discipline in the country. He also strengthened economic cooperation with China. Even with the introduction of new projects, large loans from China have increased Pakistan's foreign debt many folds. This provoked great opposition from opposition parties as well as ministries against Sharif. Meanwhile, the Panama Paper League controversy of 2015 brought to light evidence that Sharif was a major corrupt figure. In 2017, the Supreme Court barred Sharif from continuing as the Prime Minister and Shahid Khagan Abbasi took over as the new Prime Minister and Nawaz Sharif fled the country. In 2018, Supreme Court found that Sharif and his daughter Maryam was guilty. Elections were held in 2018. Former Pakistan cricketer Imran Khan's Tehreek e Insaf party came successful in the elections. By then, public debt in Pakistan had risen sharply. The United States has cut off financial and military aid to Pakistan, accusing it of not doing enough to fight terrorism. However, Pakistan somewhat overcame this by taking financial assistance from China, Saudi Arabia and UAE. In December 2019, Supreme Court has sentenced Parvez Musharraf to death for treason and for declaring a state of emergency in 2007. Rising inflation in the country and conflicts with the military have threatened Imran Khan's position as Prime Minister. This is the history of Pakistan so far. The story of Pakistan is the story of a country that is poised to become a land of peace but instead collapsed on all fronts of administration. I'll be back with another interesting topic. Until then, bye.